So we are getting to the next uh, sections, Kajiyama. So this is about the performance tuning and also how we troubleshoot the way MySQL is doing. So MySQL can be heavy duty. So how do we see the world is doing work and how we troubleshoot, how we make it better? So this is the talk. Okay, thanks, uh, Kajiyama. Okay, big applause to him. All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Yusuke Kajiyama. I'm sales consulting team leader of MySQL. Uh, so my, today uh, I'm introducing two topics, starting with troubleshooting. Well, it's more like, you know, how do you get information from MySQL, which is useful for troubleshooting. I don't go into uh, too much on the actual troubleshooting itself, but uh, how you can get the information. And I'd rather go, uh, go spend a bit more time on the performance tuning. So the baseline of the troubleshooting where you got to start with is always you have to find any issues inside of MySQL, and it's mostly coming from log files. And what to do? Uh, most importantly, protect your data, protect your uh, environment, application up and running. So that's kind of ultimate goal. Uh, you you got to do the uh, troubleshooting. But to avoid that kind of a situation, oops, didn't have pointer. You must have the redundancy of your environment, which I've already explained, using MySQL in the DB cluster for the uh, high availability configuration. In case of failure of single node, just remove it, and rest of the servers will take care of application. So that's the beauty of the MySQL uh, uh, in the DB cluster, uh, which comes with MySQL server, uh, MySQL, uh, sorry, 8.0, with the newest major version. It, no worry, even if you're using uh, one major version older, MySQL 5.7 comes with uh, InnoDB cluster plugin as well. And then you gotta uh, look into the details of what's happening inside of MySQL. Then there are many places you can look into the, the uh, root codes. But the first call where you gotta go is log files, especially the uh, error log of MySQL, which gives you the all details of the errors, what's happening inside of MySQL, and it's more like a uh, uh, sorry, the uh, server level or errors. It doesn't give you the application level error. That should be coming back to your application side. So application uh, team got to look into the uh, exceptions, error messages back to application. Again, this error log is server side error only. And one more log you uh, must turn on. By default, it's off, but we strongly suggest is a uh, log, log file named slow query log. You can turn on this log by, by, by the parameter, slow or query log, and you can specify the file name. This slow query log, name says, it will log every single select uh, SQL statement, which is slow. That, then how slow is slow? It depends, right? So we can change the threshold. By default, in, uh, if your query is running more than 10 seconds, your query will be written into the log file. And inside of a slow query log, it tells you actual query execution time as well as log wait time. The one of common scenario, especially you, you try to up, update something, but someone else is also updating the same record that will conflict. And the, because of, of the MySQL has a nice log mechanism, one transaction is changing record, another uh, transaction tries to change the same record, might be or can be waiting for someone else. So uh, throw it all also tells you, because as a guy is looking at, uh, doing something, you don't know the data portion who is actually doing, but you can know from the other points. And how long, at least this log file tells you how long this query was waiting for someone else. There, there's another log named the general log. Usually we do not suggest, recommend you to turn on general log, because general log logs everything. Every single queries and every single MySQL service internal behavior will be written into the, this general log file. So in the production environment, especially server, when server was busy, this log file, if you turn it on, it'll be huge. But when you need to debug uh, behavior of MySQL, especially in test environment, you turn on general log and running application one by one, and you can see what's going on inside of MySQL. 
And sometimes there can be the unexpected behavior. Maybe application is running query so many times, which is totally, if it's not expected, yep, time to change, the, change your application. And skipping the next topic because this is referred in the next slide. Of course, it's important to know the environment, operating system environment first before going to the uh, troubleshooting. Because one of the common scenario or kind of mistake we are seeing is some queries may be so slow. And then the application team is looking into, okay, let's try to tune SQL statements. Maybe try to add index or removing index modifying a part of a SQL statements. But if, by mistake, with some reason, that server is consuming a lot of swap, maybe you can look, find those information in the IO start, VM start, especially VM start or top. You can see server is do, you know, doing the page out or page in for web swap. Swap is one of the slowest behavior inside of operating system. So even if you try to tune SQL statements, if server memory usage was not optimal, your query may be a bit faster, but still really slow because of a swap. So it's really important to start with broader scope and targeting the details. So the checking the OS, especially if, uh, tools like uh, uh, VMstat or uh, uh, TOP, to see the uh, CPU utilization, memory usage, disk I.O. And one more thing you gotta be careful is network performance. The one, this is one of uh, my experience, experience uh, of troubleshooting. At the one customer, customer is complaining, my SQL is so slow in response, especially for the big selection statement, a selection statement with big results. Then I looked into the environment, CPU utilization not so high, disk I.O. not so high, they have a really good disk. But with some reason, the net, uh, network engineer, you know, by mistake, configure 10 gigabyte, uh, 1 GB ESA network as a 100 megabps. And not a fluid prax even. It's kind of odd why he did it. You know, hopefully not intentional. But anyways, without checking network performance, latency, if I could tune my server parameter uh, perfectly, and the query is truly optimal. If network performance is too slow, large data set cannot travel back to the application immediately. So then you, you gotta check, like, you know, whenever you do the troubleshooting or performance tuning, you, the, that's you know, really important for you to uh, you know, ask yourself, is this is a really the root cause? Am I really looking at the right thing? You gotta have the bigger scope, bigger view of the entire things first and go into the details. Okay, then one more thing regarding to the performance and uh, troubleshooting. I suggest this website named dimitri.k.free.fro. Uh, this is a, broad, a website of our performance architect. MySQL has a performance architect who is doing the benchmark only for his life. He's just doing benchmark, benchmark, benchmark every single day. But he also has a nice tools. Uh, this presentation uh, includes a, a brief overview of that one. And lastly, if you have a large implementation, this is like commercial, the MySQL has a, a enterprise monitoring tool, enterprise monitor. But today is not, not the main focus uh, of, uh, of the, my presentation. I go, rather go to the, the features, technologies available, applicable to the community edition as well. MySQL uh, does come with the schema named the sys schema. It's in, it was introduced in the earlier version of MySQL, but now by default it's available. But if you were using MySQL 5.6, you must install a uh, sys schema. The good news is Ivan Mer wrote a nice blog to have the sys schema for the MySQL 5.6. Newer version, don't worry, it's already there. Then, one of the things uh, I need to highlight here is this command in the sys schema. It's a, actually a routine, stored a routine, named uh, diagnostic. Uh, this command will help you to get all the information you need to see inside of MySQL. 
If you have experience using MySQL, there's a command named uh, show global status to know the MySQL server's internal behavior, or really basic command, status. It tells you the really basic status of the MySQL server, like a version number, a character set, or much more details. It's available single command. And one more thing is this will repeat every 30 seconds to get the, uh, fetches those statis statistics. But to use it, you gotta turn on the one parameter on top of sys, uh, sys dot, sorry, uh, diagnostics dot allowed underscore uh, I S tables. This is search to uh, fetching all the statistics information uh, to store it into the, uh, the um, cache and you can see all the information. Then it's including global var variables InnoDB status, it's a, do the show, in, in, uh, show engine InnoDB status. And you can see the inside of InnoDB storage what's going on for the transaction, log, uh, semaphore, and so on inside of uh, InnoDB. This is a regular command, show or engine InnoDB status, but this diagnostic gives you everything after a single command. What else? Replication information you can get, tons of in things inside of a sys schema, including the uh, you know, this transaction, uh, sort of the uh, process rest is like a client connection, and the, uh, things related to I/O and the uh, weights inside inside of MySQL. It's like a, coming down to a social level of MySQL even. And a per table, per host, uh, and so on. You can see with this command. So I guess this, uh, this, you know, sort of was really basic information. What kind of schema exists, how many tables, how many views there, and so on. There are a whole a lot of information comes out. But if you tried in the console, output will be like this. It's too much, I know. It's too much to see on the screen, and then the, as I mentioned, yep, so the, another output, think some, something else, something else, something else. On the screen, it's too much, and I, you can, you know, automatically refresh this one to get like every 30 seconds, every 10 sec, whatever, but I know it's too much to view on the screen. So what I, I suggest is in reference manual, it tells you, So this is a, a part of the reference manual of this diagnostic command. Rather not only executing on the console, use a key command to specify the output file, okay? Then this command will repeat and push into, the, uh, push into this file, and you can read it later on with you know, text editor, whatever, or if you prefer to uh, analyze with uh, sad or old whatever the text commands if you love, and you can look into details. So there are lots of lots of output, but the most important thing is this, uh, yeah, the most important thing you gotta uh, think about or look into is of course snapshot at the moment is one important thing to you look into, but one more thing is you compare delta from one output to another. Maybe the difference of the value inside of some outputs, different ent entries in the uh, same outputs. So then you can know the, what, what's happening the 30 seconds, ago, uh, 30 seconds ago and now, and you can compare what's, uh, uh, what's happening during that period. So this, is a, uh, this must help you to see a lot of details of MySQL server, but one more tool uh, I need to introduce is this. Lovely MySQL Workbench. MySQL Workbench is a free GUI tool. It's a free, totally free to use, to, uh, you know, to use all features. And I already have the pre-configured uh, MySQL server connection. So I'm connecting the server. Sorry, this is not visible to me. So let me switch to the mirroring. Mirror the screen. Excuse me, just one moment. And switch to the laptop. Looks good, all right. So oh, there are a couple things we can do. Uh, yeah, like uh, you can type SQL statements here. Run. 
you can write the SQL statement like this. And of course, you can execute it. Whoop, some error. It says, yes, it's not connecting to the MySQL server properly. How come? Okay, so all, uh, okay, I'm not connecting to the server properly. Okay, there we go. So next thing is you can have the really simple, but the kind of good enough dashboard for you. Then you may run some benchmark. I'm just running a MySQL slap. is a benchmark, client, uh, easy benchmark tool. It's just finishing quick. But now we see some spike in the you know, DB's disk I.O. or uh, SQL statement usage. And below of this one, it tells you like, you know, well, there are like 16 selects per second in the last benchmark, and so on. So it gives you really, really basic uh, view of the, what's happening inside of MySQL. And one more thing you can check is there, uh, you can see the sys inside of a sys schema, as I, which I mentioned, which is uh, uh, coming into MySQL 8, tells you a lot of performance statistics. So diagnostic commands fetches everything at a time for you, but about memory usage, it's total, total memory is really small. And number of users is a bit, a bit small, so only like two connections, but each user is consuming this much. What else? Uh, disk I.O., top file I.O. activities record. What is the last one? The last one is InnoDB's data file. And Android logs are also a bit busy. How about the C, uh, SQL statements? Okay, diagnostic, it t usually takes a long time because like each query takes, uh, takes a long, long time, which I said, like 120 sec. In total, it's a repeat for 120 sec. And the insert statement took longer time than uh, select, it seems like, by the number of execution time. Total time is right here in USAC. And you can see it on the screen. It's kind of simple. But internally, again, this one is using so-called sys schema. Okay, so oh, that's the thing oh, you got to do. And this is advice from our uh, performance architect, the guy named Dimitri. So what is the, uh, the uh, best practice, number one, for the performance tuning of MySQL? Is this, use your brain. As advice from the, our performance architect, yes, you got to think about what's going on inside by yourself. But, of course, you uh, you got to do uh, important thing number two is monitor your environment. Then to monitor your, uh, your environment, there are all different tools I mentioned. But the one more thing you have to remember is uh, the guy he, he, for the performance architect of MySQL created a tool to monitor your environment to create this kind of graph. And this tool uh, do, uh, helps you to tune your environment. It's like you know. You have to you must always re, uh, you know tune your application, DB itself, OS, and a hardware sometimes storage file. But to know the query e performance, the number of benchmark tools available for uh, which works with MySQL. And our dev team is always using tool named Sysbench. That's a standard benchmark for the MySQL dev team. And uh, uh, our benchmarks our uh, performance architect Dimitri, he also created a nice statistics tool or the monitoring tool named the DIMSTAT. And this DIMSTAT, um, including the uh, set of the benchmark set, you know, you can uh, uh, create environment and get tons of commands to, to setting up the environment. And it's, uh, it's internally using MySQL inside, by the way. And you can uh, run. Uh, these queries and you get the results. So these commands, uh, you know, for details, I e suggest you to uh, refer uh, his blog again. Was Dimitri's blog? There we go. Dimitri K. Free. Fr. Slash blog. Slash blog tells you tons of benchmark, previous benchmarks of MySQL, and uh, uh, tools are available not in the uh, blog, uh, the main main page of his. 
and you can uh, see the details. And a couple things from uh, his blog or uh, for the uh, recent benchmark. Yeah, so one, one of, uh, one of uh, delta from the mice for 5, 7, and 8, read on the benchmark, more and more users, higher throughput. Yeah, there are some more things we need to improve a bit. And this is a read and write benchmark, I believe. Yes, it's no. 5.7 is, uh, sorry, mice 8 is way faster than MySQL 8. So our newest ver newer version is always faster. And there are lots of things we are working on inside of MySQL 8. And, uh, sorry. But back to the MySQL Workbench, I want to show this one in a live demo, but there is some reason it didn't work. But a MySQL Workbench, starting with MySQL 7 as well, it comes with so, uh, tool function, so-called Visual Explain. And this visual explain tells you how this, select, uh, how this query is uh, processed or optimized inside of an optimizer. This is the uh, query doing the one, two, three, four uh, join of five tables. And each table, green ones are using unique key lookup, but wait, one table we are doing a full table scan. So we may need to look into uh, to improve the, uh, uh, sort of look into adding index or modifying query to have better performance of this query. You may get a better performance by adding an index. In the same time, there is a tiny number on the left top corner of each boxes. It says uh, numbers, which is the cost of each operations. So if this query is used doing the full table scan, but the cost was small, actually in this case, it's a really tiny cost. You may ignore full table scan of this query. You may change other things in this, uh, in this server. Maybe this one having the lowest number of, of the cost for the non unique key lookup. So, sorry, unique key lookup. We may try to change the conditions. We may filter against this table first. And there are lots of outputs. It tells you, you know, the blue ones tend to usually okay uh, better. Some green ones are okay. Red ones we got to look into because it's doing full table scan. So this is part of the MySQL Workbench. It's a free tool. I strongly suggest if you uh, uh, download, uh, if you haven't used it, I strongly recommend you to test with. And it tell, tells you a lot, a lot of uh, you know, useful information. And I believe I'm, I'm running out of time. Am I? Yes. So I, I'd like to finish you know, uh, single, uh, single slide, uh, uh, sorry, two slides. InnoDB buffer pool is the most important parameter of MySQL to tune. If you cannot have enough time to tune anything else, tune this parameter to make this parameter as large as possible, but not make swap. Default size is 128 megabytes, usually too small for everything. If you have 16 GB in the server, and if uh, MySQL is only application running there, set this one to 10 GB. It's usually uh, more than enough, or 12 GB is kind of good guess, but depending on the other parameters you tune. And one more thing is in a DB e log, uh, log file size, you, you can, uh, this, the lo uh, log file in the file system uh, to store your ongoing uh, sort of committed transaction. So larger is usually better. But maybe like, you know, uh, if you have a, uh, 10 GB of uh, buffer, 1 GB of file can be okay. But you feel like, oh, well, it's too much to tune one by one. The MySQL 8 comes with InnoDB dedicated server. That's a new para parameter in the MySQL server 8. You don't have to uh, configure all the details, these several parameters uh, about InnoDB storage engine. MySQL, uh, so InnoDB dedicated server parameter, if you turn it on, it will detect size of memory and tune these parameters automatically. So this uh, avoids you to do the manual tuning of the parameters. And we are expanding uh, this uh, feature. And you, you, we can automate parameter tuning uh, with these parameters.
Oh, I will con conclude my session by showing that parameter in the out console. Where is the console? Yep, so this is a parameter named the InnoDBE dedicated server. Right now it's off, you can turn it on, and the MySQL server will tune InnoDB buffer pool, InnoDB log file size, and some more. 